After several days of uncertainty regarding this tropical wave and its possibility of developing into a tropical storm, it's now likely, based on the latest um, forecast from the National Hurricane Center, that we're going to see tropical storm Emily approach the Caribbean as there has been a lot more convective activity surrounding the low-level center today compared to what was anticipated for today, where now we have a high 70% chance this develops within the next seven days and a 50% chance this develops as early as two as the, um, within the next 48 hours which would definitely be concerning for the Caribbean islands now that we're seeing a stronger storm in our hands as it seems like there's a lot more humidity surrounding the storm for a lot more lift to occur let me show you guys water vapor imagery so this is how Invest 95L looks like right now and we do see that there's a decent amount of convection going on around the low level center. Now at this point what the computer models forecasted was that there was going to be a wide area of scattered thunder showers not really a very um, small and consolidated area where the low level center could be closed and where the majority of thunderstorm activity will occur but it seems like the computer models definitely um, under underestimated this storm's intensity as well as convective activity surrounding the low level center as there isn't as much dry air that's inhibiting the lift and the convective activity around the center of circulation and that's suddenly um, uh, the reason why the National Hurricane Center has risen its chance we're going to see a tropical storm and the computer models have as well so there's definitely something to definitely be aware of for the Caribbean islands at this point now you're probably wondering how strong will this tropical storm get to now that it's um, it rapidly intensified a lot more than anticipated? Well, we're going to still need to pay close attention to the amount of stable air that's just so west of it because while the dry air isn't necessarily stopping this convective activity from occurring, it isn't out of the area 100%. We still do see the small swath of dry air and we do see a little bit more dry air just to the east of this storm and eventually there could be the possibility that the dry air does become a little bit too much for this storm to handle but I'll say it's less likely at this point that we're not going to see this develop into a tropical storm most likely we're going to see tropical storm Emily out of this however I'll say the dry air will most likely put a limit to how much it'll shed let me show you guys the computer models right now in the latest forecast run of the GFS model, the GFS model now has a higher amount of confidence that this storm will be much stronger than it initially anticipated. So as we continue to move forward, as the storm system continues to head further westward, we see that the GFS model is maintaining its strength for the most part when it comes to this tropical wave. It's hovering right around the 1,010 millibar range. So that's borderline tropical storm or maybe a slightly above tropical storm status. Is. However, I even think that this um, latest initialization of the GFS model run is still underestimating how much this storm will strengthen because I do believe that it should intensify more than what the GFS model is suggesting because the computer models are still a little bit behind with how much convective activity is going on surrounding the center of circulation of this tropical wave. So most likely we're going to see over the next several initializations, we're going to see the computer models continue to shift their forecasts to a more stronger solution and we're going to need to wait and see how much stronger it is before we can give a more conclusive um a more conclusive answer regarding how much this will strengthen um as we approach a caribbean still won't be a hundred percent certain but it will definitely give a better idea than what we're seeing right now but we do see that the gfs model still wants to take a tropical storm for strength storm towards the leeward islands so you should expect of course heavier rainfall and gusty winds right around the wednesday july 26th time frame and what's interesting is that the gfs model wants to shunt this even more so and um once it approaches the southern portion of the caribbean islands just to the south of puerto rico where it reaches its peak intensity at this point with its millibar pressure hovering around 1006 millibars which is definitely very interesting initially it was expected that the wind shear would have been too much in the southern caribbean but about the computer the gfs model especially has been shifting its forecast where at least early on in the southern caribbean the wind shear should be relatively light let me show you guys a wind shear map right now 
So this is a GFS's model's forecast when it comes to the amount of wind shear between the lower levels and upper levels of the atmosphere. We do see that the wind shear will be relatively light, which I noted in my previous videos that this would be uh, possibly the main um, catalyst in terms of this storm um, being able to potentially develop is due to the fact that the wind shear is going to be very light and that's going to definitely help at least um, increase the possibility of tropical storm development. However, now that we're seeing more convective activity than usual over a lightly sheared environment it's most likely we're going to see a tropical storm out of this and we do see the wind shear is still relatively light and while it does increase by the time um, this storm approaches the southern caribbean it still has that small area where the wind shear will remain relatively light enough to where the low level center will be sort of shielded away from that stronger wind shear um, from induced by this upper level low that would be located just to the north of Cuba. It's still in that small area and with the increased amount of convection that definitely will at least help this storm despite potentially the moderate wind shear it'll encounter by the time it approaches the Caribbean a little bit more than let's say if this were a very weak tropical wave. So that's only going to help this storm maintain its strength as it approaches the Caribbean and in fact strengthen a little bit more because once that tropical wave um, really develops a close center of circulation it d definitely takes a lot more wind shear to completely deteriorate the storm and that's what the GFS model is forecasting right here. It expects a pretty prolonged period of strengthening and then reaches its peak intensity in the Caribbean before the wind shear just becomes a little bit too much and potentially the dry air as well. Let me show you guys the relative humidity in the mid levels of the atmosphere. So there's a GFS models forecast when it comes to the amount of humidity and moisture surrounding this storm. And it seems like the GFS model, at least early on, is underestimating the amount of moisture. There's a lot more moisture right now um, compared to what the GFS model initially forecast, which makes me concerned that we could see a much stronger storm approach the Caribbean islands, potentially a very strong tropical storm. But there's still plenty of dry air so i will still say that i don't think i don't think it's gonna rapidly intensify as it approaches the caribbean but of course this storm has a much higher possibility of becoming a strong tropical storm once it approaches the leeward islands which would bring much more impacts to you guys and then beyond that point we do see that it could bring enhanced rainfall to um, puerto rico dominican republic and haiti especially if this storm were to take a slight shift further northward so in those islands even if the low level center is going to be well to the south of you guys you still could experience major impacts when it comes to flooding so you definitely need to pay close attention to that along those islands and even beyond that point we see the rain eventually impacts the Yucatan Peninsula so we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to this in the more long term future now to determine if this will strengthen into potentially a strong tropical storm or maybe even a little bit more than that we are really going to need to see the amount of dry air already so so far the computer models have been incorrect regarding the amount of dry air they definitely overestimated it and underestimated the amount of lift and convective activity going on surrounding the center of circulation so we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to the next few computer model runs once they actually detect the higher amount of convective activity to really determine the strength of this storm once it approaches the Caribbean but I will say that it's a safe bet that you should expect tropical storm force conditions at this point somewhere along the leeward islands and potentially heavy rainfall in puerto rico dominican republic and haiti by the time we approach um late next week so definitely pay very very close attention to this because this could cause an enhanced amount of flooding gusty winds and rough surf the European model is showing a fairly similar forecast to the GFS model, but there are some key differences. So, for one thing is that, of course, the European model is also underestimating the amount of convective activity going on around this the center of circulation of this storm. So, that's definitely something, um, this forecast is definitely something to take with a little bit more of a grain of salt because it isn't updated based on the latest information. Once the computer models detect the enhanced amount of convection, then we we should see um, a solution that is stronger than what you see right here but even the european model is expecting um, a pretty strong tropical storm or at least 
a, a storm that's around tropical storm status. I won't say a strong tropical storm, but we do see this brings enhanced rainfall right around the Leeward and Windward Islands, and even northern Venezuela could get involved. And what's interesting is that the the solution takes a storm a little bit further southward. This is due to the fact that the ridge is stronger in the European model scenario than the GFS model scenario, which is very interesting. We're definitely going to need to pay close attention to how strong this ridge is over the next several days but we do see with the european model there's still a decent amount of dry air so while i will say they're underestimating the amount of moisture surrounding this storm system at this point there's it's still going to need to deal with dry air as it continues ahead further westward so i think that will put a limit in terms of how much it could intensify i don't think we're going to see anything more than let's say a strong tropical storm at the max but you definitely can't rule out the um but it's i'll say it's definitely likely at this point that we're gonna see a tropical storm impact um the windward and leeward islands so you need to prepare accordingly for that in those areas and who knows maybe if the dry air is far less than anticipated could we potentially see a hurricane i think that's a very far-fetched scenario but with how much the computer models have been shifting their forecasts over the next several days i definitely wouldn't put um put it out of the realm of possibilities in terms of the track forecast, some of you guys are probably wondering if this has a possibility of impacting Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, and Cuba more directly, as well as Jamaica. Where the key thing we're going to pay close attention to is this ridge right here. If this ridge is a little weaker, then of course we should see a track that takes a storm a little bit further um, northward towards the bigger Caribbean islands. But if we were to see this ridge as strong as we see it right here, then we should see a much more um, southern track where it mainly impacts the Leeward Islands directly. And Venezuela um, receives some rainfall from this. And But still, even if this takes a, a track further southward... There's still a possibility Puerto Rico as well as Hispaniola could receive impacts regard, uh, mainly in the form of heavy rainfall. So you definitely need to watch out for that possibility whether it impacts you guys directly or not. But this ridge will be key. Right now it seems like both of the main computer models want to avoid the bigger Caribbean islands. But... I, but with how much the computer models have been shifting their forecasts, along with the some ensemble members wanting to take it further northward, I wouldn't rule out the possibility the ridge will weaken and move this storm a little bit further northward. But at this point, I'll say the most likely scenario is still that it'll take this sort of direction where it'll move just south of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. So this is what the European Ensemble members are stating at this time when it comes to the future of Invest 95L. And we do see quite a few of them want to take this um, to, um, um, f uh, the southern track where some of them do take a little bit northward towards Jamaica as well as Haiti and Cuba. And what's a little bit more concerning is that we do see that some of the Ensemble members do want to strengthen it a lot more to a point where they're over hurricane status at this point. I'd still take it with a huge grain of salt. I'll still say that the most likely scenario is that we'll see this peak out at tropical storm force intensity since there's still going to be a decent amount of dry air. I don't think that the conditions are going to be perfect enough for the storm to strengthen that rapidly, but that still should bring pretty impactful um pretty um it should still be pretty impactful for the leeward and the windward islands when it comes to heavy rainfall gusty winds and rough surf as well as heavy rainfall for the bigger caribbean islands as well potentially central america could get involved in the more long-term future so this is only something to pay close attention to at this point so this is what the GFS Ensemble member is forecasting at this time and we do see that many of them take it a very weak track and a track further southward. However, I still do believe that the GFS Ensemble members are definitely underestimating the strength of Invest 95L as they approach the Caribbean islands. So I do think it will be much stronger with this and take this map with a big grain of salt because I don't think it's it's basing this information off of the fact that there's a lot more convective activity going on. So take this with a big grain of salt. 
So here's my overall forecast when it comes to Invest 95L as it approaches the Caribbean islands. I do think Tropical Storm Emily is likely. At this point, the Windward and Leeward islands will likely get impacted by Tropical Storm Force impact. So you need to prepare accordingly, especially if you live in flood prone areas for Puerto Rico, as well as Hispaniola, Jamaica, Cuba, and even Central America. You still want to be aware of this. It's still unknown if this will bring major impacts to you guys, but it's at least something to definitely be aware aware of at this point i'll keep you guys updated once we get more certainty with the forecast but that's it for now guys and i thank you guys for watching